In this video, we are going to learn how to download files using Scrappy. So we'll start with the simple website. So this page simply has links to download files. Just to give you a heads up, whenever you download files using default settings, the file name is not going to be very useful. So what we will do is we will also download the title of the book and using this title, we are going to rename that file. So that is the agenda for today. So let's get started. So let's jump to the terminal. Once we have installed Scrappy, what we are going to do is we are going to work with the project. So let's create a Scrappy project. So Scrappy start project and we need to give it a name. So I'll just give it a name book. And let's CD inside this book folder and let's generate one spider. Okay, let's give it a name simple. And the final parameter is going to be the start URL. So I'm just putting an X here. Now I'm going to open this entire folder in VS code. So this is the spider that has been created. Now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to set the start URL to this address. So let's put the start URL here. Allow domain is not really required. And in the parse method, what we are going to do is we are simply going to output the book name and the link to the PDF file. So let's create the selector. So right click and inspect. We can see that there are a lot of divs with class col. So what we are going to do is we are going to run a loop over all these. So let's go to the code and let's write a loop. So for book in response.css and the CSS is dot C O L. Now note that I'm not going to call get or get all method because I'm going to chain multiple CSS selectors. So the book element right now is selector. So it can take more selectors. So let's go to the website. And now uh, let's find the book title. So book title is conveniently located in H5. Okay, so this should be simple. So the title is book dot CSS H5. And we need to extract the text. So I'm putting double colon text. And now we need the get method. All right. So this is simple. Now let's look at the link to the PDF. So this is the link to the PDF and we can spend some time on creating the selector. But there is one thing which I can notice directly is that this one is containing a CSS class called PDF. So the link is going to be book.css. And this is one anchor element with class PDF, double colon ATTR href because the link is inside the href. And then we have to call the get method. There is one more thing to remember here that this is a relative URL. So we need to convert this into absolute URL. So how do we do that? Just surround this whole expression response dot URL join. So now we have title and link so we can create an object so we can simply a uh, yield one dictionary from here yield any information that you want there is no restriction but when it comes to the file links that you want to download the key has to be file underscore urls okay file underscore urls and whatever you are sending here has to be a list this link that we have is containing only one so we can simply surround it with square brackets and now this is a list. If you are working with items, so what you can do is you will have your title equals scrappy dot field. This field has to be file underscore URLs. It's going to be scrappy dot fields. And there is one more thing. You also need to have a files field. Note that everything is in plural. So this is URLs, this is files. So this one will be used internally. You are not supposed to store anything inside this. Okay. This is applicable if you are working with any of these scrappy dot item objects. If you are working with dictionary, you really don't have to bother about creating this files. This will be created automatically. If this point is not clear, just leave me a comment. So the next step is to open settings.py file. So there are a lot of settings which are already there. So what I'll, I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the commented settings. So these are the settings which were already there. So what we need to do is we need to supply the files pipeline which is already built in. 
I don't expect anyone to remember that files pipeline which is already built in. So what we are going to do is we are going to do a quick Google scrappy files pipeline. So that's what we are going to search for and from the official scrappy documentation scroll down and here you will see two item pipelines. This one is for images and for files this is the one. So let's copy this go to our code and just paste in here. So this is the default files pipeline. Okay. And one more thing that you need to declare is file store. Don't be confused by the path to valid DIR. So just means that the file directory name should be a valid directory. Okay. So I'm just saying download files or downloaded files. It doesn't matter. It can be a relative URL or it can be an absolute URL. Let's go to the terminal. So let's run scrappy list and it will show the spider that we have. And here we are going to use scrappy crawl. This is important because we should not be using scrappy run spider if we are working with this project. So very quickly we can see that there are eight items scrapped. Okay. And let's look at this one. It will be good if you can understand what is happening here. So I'm just going to copy this. Okay. And create a new JSON file okay, and format it. So this is the title key and this file URLs. Okay. So this is the file URLs and this is a list. We have this files. Remember that I told you that if you're working with items, you must create this files and see this files is getting a lot of information. So this is the URL. This is the path checksum and status. So this status is downloaded. That means the file is downloaded. You can see that this is the downloaded files. There is a full folder. And now you can see that the file names are not really friendly. Okay. But if you look at the PDFs, we can see that all the PDFs have been downloaded correctly. And of course, this is just for testing. So that's all is there in the PDF. So why this weird file names? Because the same file, let's say file1.pdf, so this kind of file name can be at multiple URLs. So if the file name is not changed, then all these file one dot PDF will be overwritten. Okay. Now to overcome this, what Scrappy does is it takes the URL because URL is always unique and it calculates the hash. So this hash is actually used to create this file name. All right. So this is actually when we were looking at it, we saw that this path was already calculated here. So this file and this file is actually called like sleepygiants.pdf. But here you can see that this file name is different, but the extension has been maintained. Extension will not be changed. What if you want to customize this file naming? So what we are going to do is we are going to create our own custom files pipeline. So how do we create pipelines? So, and all the pipelines are already stored in pipelines.py file. So I'm going to open it and this is the default pipeline that is used. So pipelines are used for a lot of different things. So we'll uh, probably have a separate video on that. I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to create a new files pipeline. And this should derive from the files pipeline. So what we are going to do, uh, we are going to take this files pipeline and on top of files pipeline, we are creating a new class where we will be modifying or overwriting only so one method which actually creates the file name. So if I just press control and click on this files pipeline, it will take me to the source code and right on the bottom. If you just go to the bottom of this file, here you will find this method file path. So just copy everything and come to the pipeline and paste it here. I'm going to delete everything. Let's see what are the objects which are available. So we have here request response and most importantly, item. Now, if we have the item available, so what is item? Item is the same object that we are yielding from here, right? So it can be an object of item, this class, or it can be simply this dictionary. So it will be available here. So we can directly read the title, any of the object, we can read this or we can read this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this title. So let's come here and let's simply print item dot get this title. We still need to enable this pipeline. Okay. So how do we enable this? Let's go to settings and now we don't need this. So I'm going to comment this out. 
So item underscore pipelines equals to now we need to look at the project structure. The fully qualified name is book dot pipelines dot custom pipeline. So this is the complete name of the class. This and then colon and the priority. The priority has to be one. So this is going to be the structure. We are going to the command prompt. So now let's run the spider. So scrappy list. Okay. And now I'm going to call scrappy crawl and this and I'm just using no log because I don't want to see any of the log message. I just want to see whether this was printed or not. So and right now we can see that the book names are getting printed. They're getting printed multiple times. So don't worry about that. We are going to fix it. This function is supposed to return the file name. So how do we create the file name from this? So this one is very simple. So we know that uh, we have the title and we have file extension, which is PDF. So what we can simply do is from this function, we can return dot PDF. So the file name that we are going to have is title dot PDF. So that's all we need. Now we have our custom file pipeline. So I'm going to clear everything and let's run this. And this time I'm just setting the log level to warning so that if there are any warnings, we will see it and there is no warning. So let's go and open the finder. And there we have it. And you can see that all the files are exactly what we wanted. So this was a very simple case and the solution was very simple. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.